So a couple days ago, I heard O'Reilly uh, say something and my jaw hit the ground. That's not an uncommon thing. There was another segment we did just yesterday, I think it was, or this might have been two days ago also, where O'Reilly said, oh, c uh, civilian casualties because of U.S. drones? Rock and roll. I'm all for it. I got no problem with that. I, I lost it in that video because that's mental, right? But this is right along the lines of that. It's just as outrageous. And I couldn't find the clip. I was looking so hard for so long, I just I couldn't find it. Uh, I did manage to finally find at least the audio. So uh, listen to what Bill O'Reilly wants people to do for the good of the nation. The reason we can't delay it, Bill, it comes to the most important and popular part of the law which is ending the ability of insurers to discriminate against sick Americans by excluding pre-existing conditions and charging sick more than the healthy. You can't do that without the mandate. You can't have the mandate without subsidies to make insurance affordable. It all works together. You can't have just the good parts of this law. You have how, to have many, it all how many years have we had insurance companies not uh, insuring those with pre-existing in this country? How many years? How many? It's been since roughly the 1970s. No, it's been roughly since the Revolutionary War. Okay, that's how long, and I think for the greater good of the nation, we can go another year or nine months. Come on, Doc. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's, it's easy for you to say, but, based, but you're not someone who's living every day with the risk of going bankrupt or dying because you don't have insurance coverage. We know in Massachusetts we save people's lives. I'm Literally, talking about the greater good. I'm talking about the greater good, okay? He just said, bring back pre-existing conditions for the greater good of the nation. How one can do the mental gymnastics to think that that's a rational position is beyond me. Okay, pre-existing conditions is when a health insurance company looks into your past, finds something that was some sort of medical condition where they say, we are not gonna offer you insurance because we think you're too much of a risk, a financial risk. You know, like somebody's life is the same as a stock. Like, no, I don't want to buy Apple today. I think the price is a little off. Yeah, I don't want to, you know, insure Dave today because uh, he might cost us too much money if he dies. Oh, God, man, that's, that's so sickening. That's so sickening. Uh, and look, how many people have died because of this? Because, oh, you had cancer in the past, and then you lost your, your job, and your cancer's in remission, but now you're trying to get insurance on your own, well, we're not going to give it to you because your cancer is a pre-existing condition. So guess what? If that person gets sick again, maybe they don't get treatment. Or maybe they go bankrupt. This is why medical bills is the number one cause, uh, uh, was the number one cause of bankruptcy in the U.S. This is why. Because a lot of people didn't have insurance and they just went, fucking went bankrupt and couldn't afford their medical bills. So Bill O'Reilly, in essence, is saying people should go bankrupt because of their medical bills for the good of the nation and you should maybe die because of your pre-existing conditions for the good of the nation. There's one story uh, about this when the, in 09 when the healthcare debate was going on that blew my mind. One health insurance company told a woman, we're not gonna uh, pay for your cancer treatment because of your acne. And she's like, what? I had acne when I was a teenager. What's the big deal? Why wouldn't you pay out on my claim? I need this chemotherapy and this radiation. The company said, no, no, no. You say it's acne, we say it's cancerous skin lesions. So therefore you had uh, cancer in the past and you didn't tell us about it, pre-existing condition, you're done, we've terminated your, your claim, we're not gonna pay out. How grotesque is that man? Did you know that health insurance companies used to have entire departments that worked for specifically this? Their entire job was to go back into your records uh, and find something that they could then use to nullify the contract and say, oh, you didn't tell us that when you were in fourth grade, you broke your clavicle, so now we're not gonna pay out for your emphysema treatment. I'm not kidding. And there's a name for it. That The name of that practice is called rescission. It's going back in time and then nullifying a contract based on something like that. It's amazing that in a, a civilized society, this exists, right? It, in other countries, it's a right to healthcare in other industrial nations. You get sick, you get help, period, that's it. You don't have to pay a dime out of your pocket. It comes out of your taxes. It comes out of everybody's taxes. I mean, and his other argument is, well, look, we've done it for so many years, so what? People can't hold on for one more year for the good of the nation? Huh? 
we did slavery for a lot of years. Was that an argument for that? Well, just for one more year for good of the nation, do the slavery, why not, huh? And by the way, this is, it's an apt analogy too, it's an apt comparison, because 45,000 people die every year in the US because they don't have access to adequate health care. And Bill O'Reilly, in essence, is saying, well, whatever, one more year, just another 45,000 people can die for the better of the nation. And of course, the massive irony is that, Bill, the better of the nation is if the health insurance companies don't do pre-existing conditions anymore.